So uh, I'm, I'm here today with uh, Kevin Waldweber. Um, very nice to meet you and welcome to the DevNet Zone. Uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit about the area that you work in and the products that you look after. Definitely. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's great to be here and it's great to be back live at, at something like Cisco Live. These are great events. Um, so I'm, I'm Kevin Waldweber. I am the general manager for our data center business and our what we call provider connectivity business, which is what was formerly known as service provider routing. Yeah. Uh, so all of the, the routers, the switches, and the technologies that build up these networks. But then one of the things that we'll talk a lot about today is the, the tools that we leverage to actually automate and, and build out the network infrastructure itself. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the tooling is an important thing. You know, this is the developer relations area, and so we're really focused on how do developers and network engineers who are trying to learn a little bit of programming get involved with all the Cisco products. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about you know, how um, network engineers are starting to learn programmability and how they interface with these products. Yeah, yeah, perfect. It's actually kind of funny. So I've been here for 26 years. I've always been building bigger and bigger routers and switches, and that's generally what I've been talking about with a lot of my customers. Over the last five or 10 years, the conversation has shifted more towards not just the technologies themselves, but how do they operationalize, how do they simplify their, their operational yeah. process. And so you know, if you go back, say, five years, with technologies like, like NSO, we had this massively programmable infrastructure, but you had to have specific software engineers and capabilities and the ability to actually do things with these tools. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those tool sets that can do everything, but you really have to understand how to use it to, to go and drive it. And so we've been, we've been working with our customers, we've been working with DevNet, yeah. and trying to get people to, to figure out how to drive more programmability uh, through tools like NSO. But over the last couple of years, we've, we've figured out ways to, to simplify for, for those customers that don't really want to uh, you know, write their own software stack right. from, from soup to nuts. And so, starting with what, what we call the crosswork automation suite, we've actually built a set of tools that leverage NSO and leverage all the programmability underneath, but, but build kind of a, a simpler interface on top, still leveraging standard northbound right. and southbound APIs, but allowing them to kind of start with a base set of functionality. So they have a good go entry point, and then they can they can they can they can see what the product does, and then they can learn that hey, it's using programmability and APIs to achieve some of this, so they can extend that. Exactly. So they can yeah. extend it. They can integrate it with other infrastructure components that they may have. Yeah. Uh, but they don't necessarily have to you know start from scratch and, and build that entire stack. Yeah. Um, so in your customers, do you feel like a lot of them are are, are starting to learn programmability? I mean, they're they're starting with scripting, but uh, do you see any customers who are going beyond that and trying to do more advanced things, like taking advantage of uh, GitHub and CI CD pipelines to try to manage all the automation they do in a way that, that software is managed? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's funny because you watch the, the auto, I call it the automation journey. Where we started was people that were scripting or, or just kind of taking a manual process. Yeah. You know, if the manual process had 10 steps, they'd write scripts right, to actually steps. go through those 10 <laughs> steps. And so that was, that was the first part of automation. Yeah. But really we're starting to see a shift towards automation as true software development like you described yeah. it. And so you know, leveraging common sets of, of libraries and, and having people actually build complete CI CD workflows. Yeah. We work directly with our CX teams. We have some very, very large customers that leverage our, our software pipelines uh, and consume it in a manner like that. And so I would say it's a difficult transition and, yeah. and it takes some, some time and learning and understanding of, of just how that process works and how to adapt from a, from a traditional process they may have driven before. Yeah, um, and another, another important area is API quality. And so this is one of the things that Cisco's investing a lot in right now. Um, developer relations has been focused on that, working with product teams like yours to say, you know, how do we make sure that the experience from those developers, people who are starting to write scripts, is consistent across the product portfolio. Yeah. Um, and like, what, what kind of efforts are your team doing there? Well, actually, we work a lot with the, yeah. the DevNet teams <laughs> themselves, but it, it's kind of funny because we've had to learn a lot through this process as well. Yeah. So obviously, APIs are, are how we interface and, and integrate with other technologies. You can always build and define an API, but defining good, well-structured APIs and also yeah. driving APIs that are going to be consistent and not, not change from release to release is right. kind of a cornerstone of being able to develop a product that, that, that people will then consume in that manner. And so we've learned a lot as a development team uh, through input from, from the DevNet teams as well around how do we actually not only build good, consistent APIs, but keep them consistent release to release. And if you go back in the early days, we definitely had some challenges where you know, we would change from a new software release would come out, something would change within the API and it would yeah. you know, destroy everybody's scripts and all the work they've done. <laughs> so we've, we've learned a lot uh, and, and we're really looking forward to you know, more consumption in this matter. And, and that's super exciting to see, you know, the focus on API consistency and quality because it's, uh, you know, it's a challenge for any company that has a lot of APIs and you have 
you know, products that you acquired through acquisition, and of course they're going to have something different, different architects who design these things. Um, and in, in developer relations, we're actually working on a thing called API Insights that helps uh, us to automate the process of, of looking at a set of APIs and saying, like, are they following uh, best practices uh, in terms of their development and backwards compatibility, and this is like another area that we're focused on. Is yeah, I actually, that, that was one of the, the reasons behind what we call the crosswork automation suite, was not only to build that simplification around some of the tools like NSO, but to, to take what was years of tech debt around you know, potentially different acquisitions or yeah. different products at different ages of their life cycle, maybe they had different APIs defined, and so when you were operating on all those different applications, it's like you were operating on five different companies' yeah. tools and five different companies' APIs, and so by building this crosswork automation suite, it's a, it's a suite of applications you can pick and choose which ones you want, you can decide that you don't want to use certain parts of it, yeah. and you want to integrate with existing tools you have, but you get that commonality of the API, the interface, and, and, and it looks and feels like one common suite instead of, of multiple. So this is probably great for your partner community, because you know, one of the things that they would say is like, it feels like I'm you know, having to integrate things to create the managed service that I then go sell to my end customer, and now we're doing some of that work for them. Exactly, and, and over the last couple months, we've actually done uh, another level of, of convergence with our team. So where before I was really focused on just the, the routing and switching technologies and, and high-end routing infrastructure, we've now moved the data center technologies into this organization as well. And so now you'll start to see a lot more common building blocks and commonality between you know, how we manage data center switches and how we manage high-end routing infrastructure. So we're really excited for that. Yeah, um, you know, and I just see you know across Cisco, the effort to try to like create more of a platform type of offering as opposed yeah. to separate offerings, and so um, and I think that's like a you know, great direction to go. And I think the other thing is um, thinking about um, uh, a service as opposed to like a, a point in time product purchase. And you know, that Cisco's yeah. moving more towards that. I don't know if there's anything you can say about kind of licensing work and that whole stream. Well, I mean, all of these things play together. So, I mean, at the high level, if you think about it from from a fifty thousand foot view, we want to build products that customers love. Yeah. We want to use pro build products that are actually easy to consume and easy yeah. to operate, easy to get up and running. And the, the term I use a lot with my teams is, I want customers to be able to derive value from these products as quickly as possible, so time to value. Yeah. And if it takes you know, days, months, weeks to, to get these things set up, and then you have to do integrations with, with different tools, you have to worry about licensing infrastructure, if it's months before you can actually use a tool, it's like uh, it's like your kids on Christmas morning. If if they open the <laughs> box and, and there's no batteries and they can't use it right away, right. <laughs> they lose interest and they'll go on to something else. And so for me, it's about that time to value, building tools that the customers love, but building tools that they can actually leverage quickly. Because once they see value from a tool, yeah. you know they'll continue to use it and, and want to, to to use it more. And so we're looking at simplification of that licensing infrastructure, um, things that are not as exciting as APIs, they're but, but exciting, are definitely, but they're important, definitely part right? of, of <laughs> getting the job done, yeah. yeah. Um, another thing I've heard from uh, some of the Cisco champions that were here, were saying like, you know, um, they love the sandboxes that we have, and the reason is that, you know, if they want to test something out from one of our more complex products that they don't want to buy to try it yeah. out, they need to try it out somehow, they can go to the sandboxes and actually see if it works and get excited about it, and they're like, okay, yes, we should buy this, right? The, the cool <laughs> thing about, especially with automation, you know, when it's a big switch or a router, people want to touch it and feel it and like, get their hands on it. The same is true with, with automation tools and technologies, yeah. and the, the, the technologies demonstrate way better than they present. It's yeah. one thing to present on you know, a PowerPoint and say, you know, here's all the cool stuff we can do, but if you can actually get in and see it and visualize it and, and see what that value is when it's going to uh, move into your network, yeah. it's a lot easier to make that decision. And so yeah, as many things as we can do to get sandboxes going, get hands-on time, teach people how to do basic functionality within these tool sets, I think yeah. we're better off. And the, and the other thing, we were doing a little tour through the, the zone here, um, and we saw the UX area, and uh, the customers here are actually providing feedback on like what they like, what they find challenging, where they want improvement in the products, and you know, what, what, what do you do with that feedback? Well, actually, I love it, because my, my head of development, I actually, so we saw him earlier, my head of development will walk through, look at the little post-it notes, and actually take that feedback back. It gets directly integrated into our, our product roadmaps and, and the infrastructure builds that we do, and so the more people that use the tools, the more feedback we get, the better the products yeah. are going to be, and so it's like a virtuous cycle that we want to continue. But I love what you guys have set up here, and, and that forum for, directly our users contributing to you know, where the products go. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's been a great partnership, and I, and I love seeing the experts from uh, you know, the business units, the product teams coming here, um, and talking to huge audiences about you know, how to use the automation tools, how to use programmability, pull out telemetry, and actually display it, and, and kind of achieve things that 
maybe they don't get in the in the default dashboard, but that they want to use for whatever business reason. Yeah, absolutely. And and more and more tools are coming. So we started with just this this crosswork network controller, which is an IP controller. We take all of our, our uh, advanced technologies like, like NSO for orchestration and managing devices, um, all the work that my teams do within segment routing and kind of evolving the, the protocols, yeah. built and built an IP network controller. And then once you, you get into this platform suite, we're adding applications to it all the time. So we've uh, we acquired a company called Sedona and, and built a, a hierarchical controller that can look at your IP network through the IP controller and look at optical devices through their optical controllers even if it's a multi-vendor network, and so we're starting yeah, to build say, the multi simplification. Yeah, that, that's like the you know I came from the software world before I came here, and um, that's always what customers say is like, hey, you know, we buy from everybody, and we or we acquire, and so we have to integrate all those and see across them. So I know Cisco has you know strong products here to actually look at whatever equipment the customer has. Yeah, I mean, NSO is one of the most, if not the most, widely deployed multi-vendor product in this networking space. And when we acquired TLF, when we brought the company in, that was what our customers said. The first thing they said is, whatever you do, don't break the <laughs> multi-vendor nature of what NSO does, because that is that's that huge. is what makes it a product. And that's huge so, value for them. Yeah, so when we when we brought S Sedona in, that was the first thing we did with them as well, is we wanted to make sure it was not only the, the world's best hierarchical controller, but that we kept the, the ability to talk to anybody's IP controller, anybody's optical controller, and build end-to-end -end visibility of your IP and optical networks across whatever your network looks like. And, and and I think the ability to do that and integrate with other devices is what yeah. enables us to, to be successful. And it, and it provides you know, strength in that visibility, but also they get more exposure to other Cisco products and they say, you know, hey, over time we might retire some of these and then we might you know, get some other Cisco products I, in there. I have a great, great <laughs> quote. Well, I talk to a lot of uh, you know, CTOs and architects and people that are trying to figure out what they want to do. Yeah. Um, and it, it's funny, he said, vendors are great, Vendor tools are, are great. I have every vendor's tool in my network. <laughs> what I really need from you is to help me figure out what I'm doing with all these tools and, yeah. and how I can actually consolidate some of those and then get to that place where I'm using common dashboards and common visibility. So right. having a multi-vendor tool like NSO and things like this higher controller actually give us the ability to give them a single place to look and replace many of the other tools right. that they, they have. Right, they have to evolve over time and of course the more uh, tools and equipment they have, the higher their expense. Like they want to have one set of talent, one set of management tools, one set of all that, but as they keep growing and changing it, this is always a constant challenge yeah. for them. As, as we add complexity to the network, things that simplify, whether it's simplify the network itself, simplify operations, yeah. you know, a lot of the protocols I talked about, like segment routing, or simplify how we actually drive traffic across the network. So as the world becomes a more complex place, as we move to more cloud-based applications and things moving around the network in crazy ways, if simplifying your operations is what all of our customers are thinking about, and, and a lot of these automation tools are what enable that. I think the main thing I wanted to get across is that this is a constantly evolving space, but having engagement from you know, the DevNet teams and, and actually having a reach out to our customers yeah. has been hugely beneficial to us, and hopefully it's helping us deliver you know, better products and enabling yeah. our customers to automate their networks better. So, you know, for me, thank you. For me, coming from a software side, you know, it's really exciting to see um, you know, software practices being pulled into an entirely different uh, area. So networking is something I learned early as a software engineer, um, but it was just, you know, it's like assumed to be there. Um, but it's, it's the cloud that connects everything together. Right, right but, <laughs> but there's so much more to it uh, as yeah. I'm learning, you know. So well, thank good. you so much. I appreciate being here, and anytime you have more questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Great, thank you so much. Thank Very you. nice to meet you.